Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It is... 30, two days in, day 32 of the Trump shutdown. I'm getting prepared to never have a government again. <laughs> I'm prepping myself yeah. for absolutely yeah, no government at all. I'm, I'm, I'm licking raw chicken to build up an immunity. Uh, yeah, get it in, get it in. And I'm, I'm, I'm practicing to be my own TSA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. I'm putting a lot of time into the pat-down. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. I'm hiding something somewhere. I'm going to find it. <laughs> Looks like uh, we might be inching closer to a compromise, though. There's a possibility of a compromise, right? Something? Maybe? Maybe not. Who knows? Because uh, this Thursday, the Senate will vote on two bills that could end the shutdown, one backed by President Trump that includes his border wall, one backed by Democrats that would simply extend funding for shuttered agencies through February 8th. Yes, just till early February. Although, if the groundhog sees his shadow, we get six more weeks of democracy. <laughs> so, finally... I like democracy. There's some bad news uh, from the Supreme Court today. They revived Trump's ban on transgender military service. I don't, uh... Yeah, yeah, what you said, because... Why are they bringing it back? That was, like, 15 bigoted policies ago. <laughs> We've also voted to re-expel the Irish and keep Italians away from our lakes and reservoirs. <laughs> They're just gonna make minestrone in there. Gum up the pipes with white beans. Now, the transgender ban may not be back for good because the ruling wasn't about the merits of the policy, but just allows the ban to go forward while the lower courts work it through. And no surprise, the court split along political lines in a 5-4 to four vote. This was Brett Kavanaugh's first party-line vote, as he wrote in his emphatic concurring opinion, I like beer! <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. What are we talking about again? <laughs> There's more news today from Trump lawyer and guy realizing Rudy Giuliani is his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> Giuliani stepped in it on Sunday when he seemed to confirm that despite repeated denials, Donald Trump was negotiating a building project with the Kremlin during the entire 2016 presidential campaign. Well, last night, Rudy tried to call Baxi's in a New Yorker interview, but it got off to a weird start when Rudy told the reporter he had only a minute before getting into the shower. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> They've made me picture Rudy in the shower. <laughs> oh, and he's soaping up. Oh. <laughs> wow, he waxes. That was nice. <laughs> Interesting. Giuliani claimed that when he said Trump was directly involved with uh, Trump Tower Moscow conversations, he wasn't being literal. He was, quote, being a lawyer. What I was talking about was, if he had those conversations, that would not be criminal. He didn't have the conversations. Lawyers argue in the alternative. Oh, so Giuliani's not a bad lawyer. He's alternative to good lawyer. <laughs> Big difference. The reporter... <laughs> the reporter also asked about the BuzzFeed article that claimed that Trump told Cohen to lie to Congress. Giuliani explained he knew the story was false and then accidentally dug himself a deeper hole. I have been through all the tapes. I have been through all the texts. I have been through all the emails. Wait, what tapes have you gone through? <laughs> I shouldn't have said tapes. No, you shouldn't have said tapes. <laughs> you shouldn't have said anything, especially the part about getting in the shower. <laughs> Please tell me there are no tapes of the shower. <laughs> and this rambling mess of an interview included multiple striking contradictions like, I've been through all the tapes, I shouldn't have said tapes, the president had no conversations, I shouldn't say he had no conversations, he had very few conversations, <laughs> and my personal favorite, I have a sense of ethics that is as high as anybody you can imagine, <laughs> and also, I am not an ethicist. <laughs> I am everything. I am nothing. I am old. I am young. I am 
ever ending, just begun. Behold, I am Rudy, destroyer of clients. <laughs> then, that's from the Bhagavad Gita. That is from the Bhagavad Gita. Oppenheimer quoted that. And then the reporter asked Giuliani if he was concerned if his defense of Trump would impact Giuliani's legacy. He replied, absolutely. I'm afraid it will be on my gravestone. Rudy Giuliani, he lied for Trump. Rudy uh, doesn't really care about his legacy, evidently, adding, I figure I can explain it to St. Peter. He will be on my side because I am, so far, I don't think, as a lawyer, I ever said anything that's untruthful. <laughs> you know things are going great. When your lawyer is already prepping his argument to stay out of hell. <laughs> but listen, listen, listen. Hold on. Yeah. Let's be trying to look, get set. Technically, get right to die. But it's not just people currently working for Trump or embarrassing Trump. There's a new book out by former Trump communications aide and Crest White Strips cautionary tale. <laughs> Cliff Sims. Uh, Sims is going to be our guest next week, right? What day? Someday next week, he will be here. <laughs> I'll ask somebody who works here. Now, <laughs> Sims Tell All is called Team of Vipers. So if you're writing your own Trump Tell All, that name is now taken. <laughs> You'll have to go with Hive of Vermin, Sack of Weasels, <laughs> or Subway Car of Business Chimps Hurling Feces at Each Other. <laughs> His book... Ah. <laughs> Hurling Feces. Yeah. They throwing it out there. Be careful. The book is full of juicy details, including that Sims regularly met Trump at the private elevator of the residence and accompanied him to videotapings, carrying a can of Tresemme, Tres to hairspray, extra hold for the boss. So, now we know where Trump gets most of his best ideas from. The fumes. <laughs> Cliff, just spray the rest in the bag and leave me alone. It also uh, shed light on Trump's relationship with Paul Ryan. For example, one time when Ryan was in the Oval Office explaining the ins and outs of the Republican health care bill to the president, as Ryan droned on for 15 minutes, Trump sipped on a glass of Diet Coke, peered out at the Rose Garden, stared aimlessly at the walls, and finally walked out. <laughs> Ryan kept talking as the president wandered down the hall to his private dining room where he flicked on his giant flat-screen TV. Yeah, keep going, Paul. <laughs> keep going. No, 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 keep talking. I'm listening. I'm listening. Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Spongebob, square pants.